What's up guys? So today's video is a little bit different because I'm going to be doing a voiceover and you guys are going to be watching some pre-filmed clips um, that kind of portray what I'm going to be talking about. So we're going to address the science behind apps. Now to be honest, like when I was younger, I always wanted it. Like I always wanted apps. And like growing up, I guess it, it hasn't for me it's not the be or end all, I, you guys know that I really just focus on um, performance rather than like getting abs, but I know that a lot of you have asked me about this, about um, targeting certain areas, and abs is usually the, the, the area that most people want to target and want to get that six pack. So I thought I'd talk about it a little bit and bringing some scientific papers to help address the, the subject. Before I go on to talk about the most effective way to get abs, I thought I would mention like two of the key myths that I definitely believed in when I was younger. So the biggest one is that you can lose fat in a specific area and that's called spot reduction. So by doing ab exercise, so what I used to think was that by doing ab exercises I would lose the fat off my abs and I would, like you would be able to see a six pack. But it, it doesn't really work that way. I say it doesn't really work that way because there's a limited amount of research that suggests that it does, but only if you have a really low body fat percentage. So typically bodybuilders um, might see a small change if they heat up um, the area that they're trying to lose fat from and then do some ab exercises. But really, for the most of us, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever because we carry fat cells everywhere around our bodies. Um, within those fat cells is a compound known as triglycerides, which we then break down during exercise to release glycerol and free fatty acids. So those are just molecules that make up triglycerides. And those are the things that, we, that our muscles use for energy. But um, those fat cells get broken down all over the body during exercise, so it's pretty impossible to get a t to target a single area where you want to lose fat from. And then the second thing is that research suggests that some of the ab exercises that we're kind of really familiar with um, aren't that effective at actually developing your ab muscles. So it is really important to have a varied exercise regime. Okay, so before we get to the solution, I just want to mention a little bit about your abdominal anatomy. So, we have, we're going to work from in to out, and our abs contain three layers of muscles. So, we've got the deep layer, which is like the deepest layer, and then we've got the intermediate layer, and then the superficial layer. So, it's the superficial layer, one at the top, that gives you a six-pack look. You'll notice if you look at lots of uh, different physique athletes or different like fitness people that they have they have abs, but they might just look a bit different, and that that can be a product of their training. So, for example, I don't really have six pack, and that's because I don't train the superficial layer. I tend to train a lot more core, and that comes from doing my compound exercises and also from doing a little bit of gymnastics. So, now we're going to get to the best way to get abs. And when I say that, I mean how do we lose the fat from our body and how do we develop fat muscle in the superficial layer. So, I think the best way to lose fat, as you guys know, is for me a more permanent solution. So, it's to permanently tone and lose fat over a long period of time by frequently doing weight training, which changes your body composition from one with high fat and less muscle to one with more muscle and less fat. So, you might not actually lose weight, but you will drop a dress size or stay the same, like I did, and, and you will look more toned. So for example, I um, am wearing exactly the same size clothes that I wore when I was 16, but I weigh 10 kilos more because I've done because I've been weight training and I also have a lot more muscle definition, I look more toned. And so I've managed to change my body composition, even though it looks the same in clothes, absolutely the same, 
I weigh 10 kilos more. So please, 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 if this is you and you've noticed this from weight training, ignore the scales. It really doesn't take into account anything to do with body composition. And the second work thing for losing some extra fat is by doing some HIIT training. So HIIT is really effective at burning fat. It's not to say that low intensity or aerobic training isn't, but HIIT is very effective and your body doesn't get as adapted to it as it does with aerobic training or low intensity. So you can do HIIT with sprints, like I'm doing on the treadmill right now, or you can do it with rowing or swimming or cycling. Literally anything where you can get your heart rate up really quick, you can take a small break and then um, go back into it. You can also do HIIT with weights. So you, so I would suggest doing it with compound moves because that's, that's what's going to get your heart rate up, that's what's most difficult, going to be working your whole body. So walking lunges, barbell squats, leg press, deadlifts, again 20 to 30 seconds on, 20 to 30 seconds off. Repeat three times for each exercise and do that like for three to four different exercises. And then Tabata training is just another form of HIIT. Usually you do um, like three to four rounds of 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off for four minutes. And you typically you'll do that um, on with like body weight exercises, so like burpees, mountain climbers, jumping squats, alternate lunges, stuff like that. Um, but your HIIT workout should only really be about 15 to 20 minutes. Honestly, if you guys can do more than that, you're probably doing like aerobic exercise. And like, <laughs> this is what I, I used to think I was doing HIIT. And my HIIT, I used to tell my friends, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm doing HIIT for about 45 minutes. And my friends were like, you're not doing HIIT. And then the penny dropped that I wasn't doing HIIT. So, so yeah. yeah. And actually now, I think I can actually get a really good hit session for about seven minutes. Um, so yeah, it should be very, very quick. You should feel absolutely exhausted. Um, and it shouldn't be an intensity you can keep up for more than 30 seconds. Even at 30 seconds, you should feel like you want to die. Anyway, that's the hit session. Um, and that those are the two methods I think will um, help you to permanently lose fat and change your body composition. So when it comes to actual exercises for building your ab muscles in your superficial layer, anything where you're lying on your back, so that's called the supinated position, and crunching is an effective way to isolate your abs as long as you are focusing on good muscle contraction. There's no point using your arms to swing up um, and crunch because then most of your energy is going well you're not really putting in much energy because it's going to be a lot of momentum so you really want to focus on the quality of your movement and your contraction and focus on doing some of the most difficult exercises so that's what I do I focus on doing things that really challenge me and I'll always make sure that I'm progressive as well so as soon as something gets slightly easier I will then be like okay Natasha we need to step up the game so if you want to be building muscle, again, you want to be working in the 8 to 12 rep range. So anything like um, hypertrophy for any muscle group really is in the 8 to 12 rep range. Going above that will start to improve your muscular endurance, but it won't necessarily build visibly sized abs. And when you're doing your ab exercises, try to incorporate a variety of different movements. So spinal flexion, rotation, lateral flexion and try and change it up every two to three weeks so that you're always challenging your body because we we're great at adapting so it's important that you're always challenging yourself and you can change it up in lots of different ways so you can change obviously the different exercises that you're doing you can change the number of reps and sets that you do changing the sequence i know that's a big one because for me i had a if I came up with a sequence I'd literally know that ab sequence off the top of my head and I'd just be like right I'm gonna do this but it was never really challenging it was just to just to feel like I'd actually just done an ab routine but yeah sequence is another one changing the number of exercises that you do try changing the tempo of your exercises so doing things doing an exercise but slower so maybe three seconds up hold it for two seconds three seconds down something like that and then again like 
um, the type of contractions. So those are pretty much the two things that I think are the best way to get abs. So losing that overall body fat because you can't really spot reduce fat even though that would be a dream right but you can't really spot reduce fat so trying to lose that body fat um over your whole body and for me i think the permanent solution is by weight training so you can change your body composition and muscle does burn more calories than fat um and then doing a range of different exercises that will help you build your muscles in the superficial layer so I know this video is a little bit different. Um, do let me know what you thought about it. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. Thank you so much, guys. See you soon. Bye.